Hello, my name is Moonkat and welcome back to another beta recap. It's been quite a long time since my last one, so let me first quickly explain why. Uh, it's been almost a month now. Uh, the first two weeks, uh, not a lot happened on beta, so I didn't feel like making a video. I was planning on making one last week, but uh, then I ended up getting a cold. Nothing serious, and I'm almost uh, good again now. Uh, but yeah, that's why I didn't make one last week. So here we are finally after four weeks, I believe. So yeah, finally time to make a new one. In this video, I will go through all the change logs quickly. I will not uh, dig too, too deeply into them. I will talk about some changes to the winter event, and then I'll move on to spoilers, including the guild expedition update, possibly a brand new event. Uh, some a bit more on the rush items that I did mention last time. We have some more items, uh, icons, uh, images from the football event. We have the first images from the St. Patrick's Day event, as well as possibly something related to Rise of Cultures, who knows. So if you want to see a specific part, you can use the timestamps in the description to skip ahead to that. So without further ado, let's start by quickly looking through the change logs, and I will not go through all of this. These yellow here, uh, I mentioned it in previous videos, the yellow ones here are just uh, just uh, fixes when it comes to uh, how things look and so on, uh, smaller fixes, so I will not go through those, they are not really that important. There's some display updates and stuff like that. The orange items here are bug fixes, uh, so for example this one, the Nutcracker Guardhouse, was not correctly uh, automatically motivated, that's something uh, nice to know I suppose. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the winter event later on. Um, and yeah, some more bug fixes regarding the winter event. I'll just skip over those for now. Uh, then we have these green items here, which are uh, new additions. Uh, the limited buildings. Uh, this is quite some time ago, uh, almost a month ago. But the limited buildings don't require any streets anymore. Uh, that's already live on the live servers. Originally they did, uh, including the daunting tower from the Halloween event. But because that was a one by one tower, didn't really make sense that it needed a road. So I think they decided to just remove the road requirement from all uh, limited buildings instead of uh, perhaps only doing it for that. Anyways, in the winter event, uh, getting the shuffle uh, will give you a present now, uh, or will give you an elf for the elf's gift. So if you don't remember, uh, this is the piggy bank, same as the reindeer sleigh from last year, more or less. Uh, now, in addition to getting a reward from that from uh, daily specials, you also get one from Shuffle, and as we'll see in a moment, also another item. And then apparently they made some minor improvements to the loading time of manual battles. Not something I've noticed myself, and again, this has been out for quite some time now, but uh, nice to know, I suppose. And then yeah, let's move on to the next week. As I said, I'll go through this quite quickly. Uh, another change that is already on live, uh, you were able to exchange the Daunting Tower and Haunted Tree to the Antiques Dealer. Both of these buildings are limited buildings, and you're not meant to be able to sell those to the Antiques Dealer, but uh, you were able to, so if you took advantage of that, you would have been able to exchange uh, some of these if you wanted to. Uh, then on the Thursday of this week, they made some more balancing changes to the winter event, and I'll check the uh, check that out in a moment. We have it all listed here, and then some bug fixes. Apparently, there were some issues with login on mobile. I'm not sure if that affected you, but again, this is quite some time ago, so that should be finished now or up uh, fixed now. Uh, but yeah, there were some issues. Uh, um, yeah, I think let's uh, move ahead. <laughs> uh, not this week, but the week before that. A uh, bunch of fixes and stuff for the winter event. Nothing really that important. Uh, so yeah, again, I think I'll just skip it. One important thing though is this last one here. The daily specials for the winter event were not correctly updated. They are now the intended ones. So there was an issue uh, similar to uh, what happened during the Halloween event on beta. Uh, they loaded the daily special list from the last year. So the first couple of days uh, of this event on beta, uh, they had the daily specials from 2021. Uh, and for example, included in those were wishing wells. And uh, you might not know, but last year, the wishing wells were available on the beta event, but they were removed from the live event. So yeah, there's some <laughs> uh, 
Uh, discussion there. Uh, we might get Wishing Wells this event on live. We might not. Uh, they were available, I believe, to the end uh, of the event on beta, but they might not be on live. So we will see there if they return or not. We'll know that uh, within the first couple of days of the event starting on the live server. And then finally, we have the change log from this week. Uh, first of all here, assets could fail to load if you had some issues with recent WebGL versions. Uh, so there were quite a few issues, or um, behind the scenes, they have updated the way assets work. Uh, it's not really something you need to worry about uh, personally in the way you play, uh, but specifically for spoiler section stuff, uh, it uh, was a real pain. So for example, if I go here and open this image here, you can see here in the uh, URL, uh, quite small, but you might be able to see it. You have this uh, checksum behind the image uh, link here. Previously, uh, you didn't need this. Uh, you were able to remove this and the image would, uh, load, <laughs> would load, so you didn't need it. So if we remove that, I don't have my keyboard. Two seconds, let me get my keyboard. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, uh, previously uh, you didn't need that part uh, for the images, for the assets. Now you do, uh, which uh, broke quite a few links in the uh, spoiler section. Uh, I've updated that, uh, but this probably also is one of the reasons why there have been some issues when it comes to assets in game as well. Uh, not something that has been updated on live servers yet, so not something you need to worry about. And I imagine they will fix it before it goes to live. Uh, but yeah, that's something at least behind the scenes when it comes to uh, up the uploading assets to the spoiler section. Something that is quite was quite annoying, but uh, yeah. Something new they're doing to fix. Uh, the reason why they have that part behind the image uh, is related to caching. So when an image is updated, that part is updated so that they were able to avoid people caching old images. Uh, but they're doing some sort of updates to that uh, to that system, and that's why those are required now. Anyways, not really something most people have to worry about. Apparently there were some issues uh, with internal errors when trying to log in. That has been fixed. Uh, and on the app, uh, upgrading certain buildings with the one-up kit or renovation kit would make the app crash. Not something I have experienced, but that should be fixed, hot fixed on live as well. Uh, then on Tuesday, they made some further changes to the winter event. We'll check those out in a moment. And then apparently the campaign map and army management would load really slowly. Uh, that has been fixed, uh, not something I experienced myself. Uh, trying to attack a player that has not unlocked military tactics or has a city shield active did deactivate the aid button. Uh, I feel like that just might have happened to me a long time ago, but not quite sure. Anyway, it's not that big of a deal. Some display updates. Then on Thursday, once again, they added elf for your elf workshop. Uh, oh no, never mind. That This is another change. Uh, finding an elf uh, for the elves workshop, uh, for the piggy bank, uh, will no longer automatically open the window in most cases. So that's something that uh, I and others have complained about. When you found an elf uh, for the piggy bank, you would open that window automatically. You would have to choose and all of that before you could continue playing the event. That has been changed slightly. I'm still not happy about it. But now you will only get that window when you find the shuffle. Uh, so you still get it uh, once per board, which is better than up to three times per board. But I still would like it to be possible to uh, hide the pop-up for that window uh, completely. But uh, yeah, not that big of a deal. Um, then on Friday, uh, upgrading a terrace farm with too little population will lead to an internal error on the app, apparently. Uh, reaching the force point li collection limit once, spending some of them again and collecting a building like this stage of ages. They sometimes not work, which is interesting. Uh, I believe the stage of ages uses a new building format, so perhaps that's what he means by the buildings like the stage of ages. Uh, and then the add incidents uh, would stay on the grid even if you unlocked an expansion. Uh, so not that big of a deal, but, uh, but yeah, nice to know when you upgrade or get an expansion that the uh, it will be removed uh, or moved, I suppose. Anyways, let's move on to the winter event changes. 
So in addition to what we have already seen in the change logs, uh, they have added an elves present to the show too as well. So if you go in game for a moment, you will see that now you get one of these elf gifts from the shuffle show to as well as the daily special. So quite a few additional ways to get these rewards, uh, but you, st you still have to pay diamonds from for them. It's still the same mechanic as last year from the piggy bank uh, reindeer sleigh. So yeah, not something that uh, I think most people will bother about. And even though there has been some good rewards here, uh, they're really rare to get. You would have to spend diamonds, additional diamonds to get them. I'll go over this in my guide. Uh, yeah, not really something that I think most people will bother with because, for example, my current selection here, definitely not worth 3,000 diamonds. Anyways, um, the calendar will now provide a full Notchcracker guardhouse instead of 100 fragments. So originally, I suppose this gave 100 fragments instead of a full Notchcracker guardhouse. That said, it's still not worth going for the calendar. It's still impossible for free. And even if you are going for multiple buildings, as I will go over in my guide, it is actually more expensive to go for the calendar than just straight out uh, spend everything on one day. So even if you are going for multiple buildings, I do not recommend going for the calendar. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, the 10 fragments of a renovation kit in the grand prices have been changed to a full kit. And they made some changes to the daily specials, removing most of the fragments and the 100 medals, which was a bug, and replaced them with mostly better rewards. So one complaint, well, one really, uh, common complaint uh, from this event uh, was that certain daily specials would be fragments. So for example, five fragments of a dining car, five fragments of a parlor car, uh, and so on. Most of those have now been removed. I believe some are still available. I wonder if these might still be available. But yeah, at least uh, most of these fragments have been removed and replaced with full buildings. Uh, and I, I don't really see any reason in, in this event in particular to go for fragments here. In other events, uh, for example, the Halloween event uh, the uh, and some events before that, it would be warranted, I think, because you could get a lot of daily specials. But the winter event is not particularly good for daily specials, so I don't really see any reason for it. Uh, so nice that they backtracked a little bit there. And they also, uh, let's see if we can get the, uh, uh, yeah, they exchanged the first grand prize for winter train selection kit and moved the cars around a bit. And they removed fragments from the cars. So they made some changes to the grand prices here. Uh, originally, uh, this one was, uh, I believe it was five fragments of a train car. Uh, and we got a few more fragments later on, but now this one has been swapped out with a winter train selection kit, which is quite nice uh, if you want to go for that. And then wherever you uh, got uh, fragments before uh, for the cars, I believe it was the parlor car, you now get a full one. So first you get a freight car here, uh, then you get a dining car. Uh, this is probably where you will end up if you play for free. Um, although I did play for free, so I was able to still get a little bit more. But yeah, this is around here is where you will land if you play for free. And then further on, you have the sleeping car, as well as the parlor car, which is this is what is required for a second main building. So you might not get this even if you are going for two main buildings. But yeah, those have been swapped out for some better rewards, so that's nice. Uh, they have added two master key parts to the uh, ha half of the reward 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 pools. There we go, for the elves gifts. Um, let's see if I'm able to show that. I'm able to spend ten stars. So let's see if I'm able to. Actually, no, I wouldn't be able to anyways because I have filled up anything. All of this. Anyways, I will go over it in my guides. But when you get a reward, you can choose between two of these uh, items to choose from. Uh, each of these items you can uh, choose to swap out that reward and when you swap out, which costs some diamonds, uh, you will get another reward from a pool of rewards. I did show this, I believe, in my first impressions video, so you can check that out if you uh, don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, uh, some master key parts have been added to that. It's still not worth it to go for the calendar and I wouldn't really like going for the key parts there anyways, so, so yeah. Uh, then, the other big change, the two upgrade kits for the Chocolatery, still don't know how to pronounce it, uh, in the grand prices, later on, have been reduced to one each. 
So previously in the grand prices here, so after the free ones, uh, uh, after what you get for free, which is this one, that's the last upgrade, and then you have the selection kit here. After that, every of these upgrades here gave two instead of one upgrade kit. Uh, so we got two, two, and so on. You still get two selection kits in the uh, event pass uh, list here. Uh, so if you are going for uh, two buildings, it is worth going for the event pass, assuming you can buy it for diamonds. They're still A-B testing that. Uh, but anyways, uh, in the bottom row here, for the regular grand prices, they were two upgrade kits that's now been uh, replaced with a uh, one. Uh, which, to be quite, to be frank, I don't have any issues with that. Uh, I think it was too good, to be honest. Uh, previously, you could get the second building very cheaply. Uh, don't remember exactly, but uh, well below 10,000 diamonds. Uh, so I think it is warranted. And now to get the second building, again, as I'll go over in my guides, it'll probably be around 10, 12,000 diamonds, which I still think is a good price. So yeah, I don't think this is an issue that they replace these two uh, pieces with one. I think that's perfectly fine. Would have been interesting, but uh, but yeah, I think it's uh, things all right. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? Uh, this one, the amount of goods was too high in the winter prices. It has been divided by five, which was the intended amount. So on the top row here, you got some goods here. 80 goods, that was apparently times five, so 400 goods. Uh, so yeah, that has been changed now, which is, which is quite all right. Anyways, I believe that is it for the winter event. As I mentioned, I will be making my guys and all of that. Uh, not quite sure when they will be out, but I think at latest next week. Uh, I think I'll be able to complete them during this week. As for when the winter event will start, we don't know. Uh, my guess would be either Thursday the 1st uh, of uh, December, uh, or if not then, uh, the Tuesday after that, which would be 4th, I believe. 4th or 5th of December. No, 6th, actually. So I believe either 1st December or 6th December would be my guess, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. All right, let's move on to the spoiler section. First of all, the guild expedition. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but we have received absolutely nothing in the last week, uh, last month, sorry. So since my last video, we have not received any new updates for the guild expedition. So we don't really have anything new to talk about, which is quite disappointing. Uh, that's partly why I didn't make videos the first two weeks after my last video, because yeah, nothing really changed on beta. Not, yeah, not, not a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah, as for why we haven't re received anything, uh, well, I'm, I guess my speculation is that they are possibly doing some in-house testing. So that was why they added the assets to the server. Uh, but because it takes quite a long time probably to test it, they're probably... Well, they're probably just spending the time to test it, uh, because to test it, they probably have to you know, do one full week of testing to get uh, kind of an accurate picture of how it feels like in the game, in-house. And then if they do some updates, they have to do another week of testing and so on. So I imagine they're probably at that stage of testing it in-house, uh, but who knows? It might be something else completely. But hopefully in the near future, we will get some more information about it, possibly some Official information would be nice. Uh, we do have quite a few other interesting things though. First of all, we might have possibly a brand new event. Uh, we don't have too much event related, but we do have the innovation pass. Uh, so this is an event pass, possibly, uh, for possibly an innovation event, uh, or perhaps as others have speculated here, uh, this might be some sort of individual standalone event, perhaps similar to daily challenges that you as an individual do, and it uh, somehow works or has the similar mechanics to regular events with grand prizes and event passes and so on. Uh, so all the stuff you have now uh, is mainly related to event pass, also some uh, event um, uh, banners, uh, or this is event pass banners. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and the reason why uh, speculation is that this might not be a regular event is that the event pass for regular events, uh, the assets follow this path here. So 
uh, assets shared seasonal events, the event, and then pass. But all the images here are instead shared GUI innovation pass. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, that suggests that it is not a regular event, uh, but all of these are uh, assets we are familiar with from regular events, with the grand prizes and event pass and so on. Uh, so that's kind of why the this, uh, the uh, discussion or uh, speculation is that this might be some sort of uh, separate or individual event, or somehow that is not related to uh, a seasonal event, perhaps something similar to uh, daily challenges and so on, which I think would be quite interesting. Uh, we will see quite a few placeholder item items for now. We don't really know anything else about it except for this. Uh, so who knows what it is. Uh, it's just been quite a while, uh, three weeks since we got these items and haven't really received any more information since then. So yeah, we'll see. Might be something cool, might not be. <laughs> we will wait for the future. Then uh, the rush items, I did show these in my last event, uh, in my last video. Uh, they have been updated slightly. Uh, they have some new, uh, um, some new icons and new looks. Uh, but other than that, not really too much new. Uh, these seems to be uh, rush items for event buildings and goods buildings, uh, both a mass variation and a single variation. Uh, don't really know too much about them, uh, but uh, if I, I think I mentioned it here in this thread as well. <laughs> if I go here, um, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. okay, no, I think I mentioned it here in this instead. So if we go down here, should have prepared this better, sorry. So. Uh, we have some new information texts. Uh, they were added a couple of weeks ago, uh, called uh, or, um, called instant finish pop up. So when pu a pop up for instant finish, which I'm pretty sure is related to these new rush items here, because we have this instant uh, and this pop up here. Uh, it says for this one you don't have any buildings on which you can use this item, which makes sense. Do you want to use this item on only one building in your city? Do you want to use this item on uh, X buildings in your city? Uh, that's the same pop-ups we have for regular rush kits. Uh, but these, uh, the way these information texts work is that uh, they have this code in front of it, which is when uh, the information text is introduced. And here we have bowl 22, which is short for forge bowl. Uh, interestingly, it's 22. Uh, that might be some have to do with it being added in 2022 and not being related to football 23, which would make more sense. But in any event, these seem to be related to the Forge Bowl event, uh, which makes me believe that these items here will be added in the Forge Bowl event, which should be out in January, I believe. Uh, I believe that's the first one after winter, right? It's Forge Bowl and then St. Patrick's, yeah. So in January, we should know more about this. Anyways, speaking of the Forge Bowl event, we have some more information. So last time we only had these two fully level buildings. So level 11, we now have all the other levels. So level one to 10. And yeah, not really too much to speak of. Uh, but yeah, there we have those. This is how they look in game uh, that we looked at last time. We also have some selection kits. Uh, we have the upgrade kit and selection kit for the main building. That's uh, all right, that's standard. But then we have this epic selection kit. I have no idea what this is. Uh, I immediately thought about uh, some, uh, some selection kits we got uh, from, uh, we have the, uh, I believe it's a pirate or uh, ship uh, selection kits, uh, those we got from the summer event in 2018, I believe, uh, that uh, could give you a level one building for the ship or some other rewards. And then we also have a similar for the, I believe it's the altar of Artem, uh, altar. Uh, we have a selection kit there, I believe, where you can pick the altar or some other rewards. So I wonder if this is similar, that you might be able to get a level one building for the 
for for the uh, for the main building, or possibly some other rewards like some forge points or goods instead. Who knows? It might also perhaps be related to the event. I don't think so, but it might be a possibility. Uh, I don't think we have ever gotten any items that directly is usable for the event specifically. And I think the main reason for that is that if you get one of the, these items and you have to use them during the event, what happens after the event is over and you haven't used them? So I don't think it will be directly uh, linked to the minigame of the event. I think it would it will be some sort of uh, yeah, some sort of reward that you can choose from. And yeah, we'll see. It might be something brand new, which would be really interesting. Uh, the item certainly looks uh, brand new. Uh, we have the star there, which I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, but yeah, we will see later on what that might mean. Uh, then we have the loading screen. Uh, so here we have Trattoria. I remember that I didn't, I wasn't able to read what it said. So we have Trattoria there, and the other one is uh, Pizzeria. So Pizzeria and Trattoria, which I believe is uh, some sort of old or some, some style of restaurant or cafe in Italy. Uh, so yeah, there we have the name for that, I suppose. Uh, and I quite like the look of this. It looks uh, quite cool, I think. And here we have all the buildings with the final uh, level and the two variations. And the information screen, nothing really new there except for a changed out background. And then we have the portraits. Now, interestingly, we also have Coach 6 frame. Uh, so you might, you probably remember, but in the football event, you have five coaches to choose from, uh, four regular ones and one diamond one. We now have a sixth uh, frame here, which might suggest that a new coach will be added to the event. Uh, not, I believe, the gold. I think that's the same as the diamond coach, if I'm not mistaken. I think that also had a gold border around it, so it might be related to that. Someone speculated that it might be related to Forge Plus, which I hope is not the case. Haven't really seen any indication of that being the case, but who knows? This does look like something related to diamonds or premium features, so, so yeah, that might be the case. Anyways, uh, then we have the event pass, and I really like the look of this box. I think it looks quite cool. Uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, if we go in game again, uh, that's this box here. This is how it looks in the football event. I think it looks quite cool. And once again, uh, we have two variations here, one with castle uh, points, castle system points, uh, which again suggests that it will be possible or that it will probably continue the A-B test of uh, pricing these or um, requiring you to spend real money on these instead of diamonds. Uh, I hope they will not go for that in the end. I, of course, much prefer the diamonds. Uh, but yeah, if that is indeed the case, I don't know. Hopefully they are. <laughs> they see that uh, not a lot of people buy it, but who knows, perhaps people are still buying it for real money. But yeah, it's something that is being A-B tested now. Has been for, I believe, the Halloween event at least, and a bit longer, I believe, on beta. Uh, so yeah. Who knows, they will probably continue that, I suppose. Uh, and yeah, that's what we have for the Forge Bowl event. Then, the St. Patrick's Day event. We also have some new stuff there. So here we have the main building. It is five by four. Uh, here we have all the previous levels. And I think it looks really cool. And someone uh, in the thread here uh, mentioned that it uh, kind of looks like a Hobbit house. And I, I quite agree with that. I think it looks look, looks like it could be some sort of hobbit house. Uh, or also possibly, uh, I suppose, some sort of uh, witch's hut or uh, red guest's hut in The Hobbit. Uh, I believe that uh, kind of looks like this, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, I quite like the look of it. Now, in addition to this, we have these here. We have three one-by-one -one buildings. Uh, now, exactly what these will be, we don't know. Uh, they are three separate buildings, uh, reward buildings. Uh, so we have the main building here, which is uh, PET 23A. And then here we have PET 23B, C, and D. So these are three separate buildings. 
And we actually, uh, if we go here to the selection kits, we have a selection kit that are for these three buildings. So selection kit, path 23, B, C, D. So we do have a separate selection kit for these, uh, which initially had me speculate that these might be chain buildings, but <laughs> looking by, judging by the size, not sure if they are chain, bu chain buildings anymore. Uh, it might be some sort of set, uh, don't quite know. That might be a possibility that these are set pieces. And for example, that for each of these you add to the main building, uh, you get some additional rewards or something like that. Or they might just be standalone buildings, who knows? But yeah, we at least have these. Uh, perhaps we will know a bit more later on. Uh, we also have the other uh, upgrade kit and selection kit. All of these here are placeholders now, and you can probably see, if we go back here to the Forge Bowl event, you can probably see that uh, the placeholders here are the same items as the uh, Halloween event, uh, Forge Bowl event. So, yeah, just placeholders for now. They will be updated soon enough, I imagine. Uh, then we have some avatars, icons, uh, portraits, whatever. Uh, so that's that. I'm not a big fan of any of these, I think. A bit too too busy, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I imagine a few people will like them. Uh, then we also have the assets for the event pass, or at least some of them. Nothing really to talk about here. We have the banner. Uh, the selection thing is around. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 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 where is it? The boards around this and so on. Uh, so yeah, nothing really. <laughs> important, but uh, you have some assets here, so that's nice, I suppose. Uh, so that's what we have for St. Patrick's. We'll probably know a bit more later on. And then we have the final thing here, which I'm not quite sure what to make of it. So we have this asset here. Uh, it is called Cross-Selling ROC Felix. And according to Ambergard here, the icon is from Rise of Cultures which if you don't know, is a mobile game that InnoGames are making. So, uh, my speculation here is that this might be some sort of cross-selling. So the way I would interpret that is some sort of cross-promotion where they somehow promote Rise of Cultures in Forge of Empires and perhaps Forge of Vampires in Rise of Cultures and that this is somehow related to that. Exactly how that would look, I don't quite know. But uh, I don't think that's uh, that bad of an idea that they would try to uh, uh, advertise their own games, uh, especially when the mechanics are quite similar. Uh, it's also a city building game, uh, mobile only, but it's still a city building game. So I don't know, it might be some sort of uh, cross promotion. And I think that would be cool. Uh, you might get some sort of reward in Fall of Vampires if you try <laughs> Rise of Cultures and and complete some sort of things there, perhaps, or, I don't know, something like that, I imagine. Uh, but we will see later on if this is indeed what it is, uh, or if it's, I don't know, something else completely. Anyways, I think that's it for this video. We've gone through quite a lot of different things. So, before I end, let me thank my Patreons for their support. I would like to thank Homsar, Forpefect, Lorden, Rocknobin, Kim Kelly, Rolf the Eighth, PQ the Goat, Dan Simula, JT the Rev, Merrick B, Hugo Kant von Count, Jan Fredriksen, Ruth the Dunwes, Filda, Susan Weiss, Megarok, Rocco, Merton Emrys, Henrik der Eichlerberg, Mattia, After the Obsessed, Raf, Adarel, Mike, Wolfboy, Atomic, and Flavius Belisarius. Thanks a lot for your support. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the future.